Hello everybody, Jake here and welcome to The Hobby. We have so much exciting news to talk about this week, so let's jump right into it. First off, the big news is that the whole entire set list for Darkness Ablaze has been revealed. There are a lot of amazing cards inside of the set, over 180 regular Pokemon cards as well as 12 secret rare cards. We're definitely going to do analysis on all the cards and show you what are the best chase cards in Darkness Ablaze. Also, the Pokemon Company has offered a small limited reprint of the Sun and Moon set Ultra Prisms. You'll start seeing stores offer pre-orders on Ultra Prism booster boxes for the next couple of weeks. This is a very limited reprint, so I don't expect to see a large number of booster boxes rolling around. But this does mean that a lot of collectors are getting cold feet around modern sets. So we are definitely have to look into what some of the most risky modern sets that you can collect right now are, as many of them are in danger of being reprinted themselves. The Pokemon Company has also just announced the winners of the 2020 Illustrator Contest. The winner of the Illustrator Contest gets their drawing or illustration created into a Pokemon card. These Pokemon cards are usually promotional and they end up being very rare over time. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, they did a promotional art contest for Zoroa, and pretty much one person from every single grade, from first grade to 12th grade, was allowed a winner. And all of these cards are now well over $1,000 per card, so that just shows you how expensive Illustrator cards can be. The winner of this contest will have their card printed in the upcoming months. So this is definitely one I would be watching out for because you can pick up the card on ground zero. So what is going to be in the Darkness Ablaze set? We have officially 189 cards with 12 secret rare cards for a total of 201 cards in the set. It's going to be a very large set. There are five hyper rare VMAX cards that you can pull inside of Darkness Ablaze. We have Butterfree VMAX, Center Scorch VMAX, Eternatus VMAX, Scizor VMAX, as well as Salamence VMAX. Of these five, the most expensive and most playable is probably going to be your Eternatus VMAX. Is this the chase card of the set? It could be. There are also some other really expensive cards inside of Darkness Ablaze. It looks to be a really banging set, as Unlisted Leaf might say. We also have two gold cards inside the set. This has been an ongoing trend in Sword and Shield. The two gold cards are Rylaboom gold card, as well as Colossal gold card. Uh, the Rylaboom card is probably going to be the more expensive of the two, but I will say that the Colossal a gold card looks really amazing. It's amazing artwork. Too bad it's not a very popular Pokemon. Rylaboom is certainly the more popular one. Overall, the gold cards usually go for around $40 or $50 and usually contain some of the most gorgeous uh, modern Pokemon card artworks. So yeah, really beautiful cards. I think some collectors later down the line might start collecting gold cards. So these are some cards that I would definitely be watching out for because they could reach some pretty insane prices in the upcoming years. Two cards that are definitely missing from Darkness Ablaze is of course the Charizard Hyper Rare V Max as well as the Charizard Full Art V card. Both cards are Japanese promo trophy cards and when they do these they don't tend to print English versions of the cards. They did this in 2019, they did this in 2018. So this is not a surprising move. What is a surprising move is just in general not printing a Charizard Hyper Rare V Max. This card is a gorgeous card that I think a lot of collectors are going to want. Having only a Japanese version of it and as a trophy card will significantly increase the price of the trophy uh, Hyper Rare Charizard V Max, the Japanese version, considering that there's not going to be an English version. Would they print the Charizard Hyper Rare V Max in a later set? They could. They still could. I think it would be a smart move by the Pokemon Company because it'll, it'll sell so well. Whatever uh, pack it's in is going to sell incredibly well. What set could it be in? It will certainly not be in the 2020 holiday set and I don't see it being in a later set. So the next time that this card could potentially be printed in English, if it ever happens, 
They might never print the uh, Charizard Hyper-Rare V Max in English, but that would be a travesty. Like, it's a shame for the Pokemon company not to print it when they know it's going to be a super popular card. So the next logical set that it would be in would be the 2021 holiday set. If you do not see this card in the 2021 holiday set, that means it's not going to be printed in English forever. Uh, that would be the last bastion where it could be in. I think if it's not going to be in the 2021 holiday set, the Japanese version, which there are going to be 1200 copies of, 1200 copies is not a lot. That's a very limited print. With 1200 copies of that and being the only version of the card, it's going to skyrocket in value. It would probably be one of the most expensive modern card in Pokemon card history. Next bit of news is that the Pokemon company has just announced the winner of their 2020 Illustrator Art Contest. The winner of the contest gets their artwork or illustration printed on an official promotional Pokemon card as well as getting a cash prize. Uh, this year's theme of the contest was cool moments in Pokemon. The Pokemon had to be doing some kind of action and be in a forest or town. The first place winner was an artist named Jiro with a Charizard artwork. The artwork features Charizard battling in a stadium with a lot of wind and its tail is kind of wisping. Honestly, a really cool artwork. This might be a big surprise, but I don't think Charizard has ever won an art contest. So considering this is a Charizard card, Illustrator card, a promotional card, there's going to be a lot of people that want this card. Uh, I usually don't go for Illustrator artwork, but this is one that I would definitely be looking to scoop up, considering that we are getting in on ground zero. I don't know how many of these cards going to be printed. It might be a thousand, it might be a hundred, it might be ten. We'll just have to wait and see, but overall, it's going to be a pretty expensive card. Not only does Jiro get his artwork printed on an official pro, uh, Pokemon card, but he also won 300,000 yen, which is approximately about 2,800 US dollars. The second place winner was a wishy-washy illustration by artist Kuzunoki. They will win 100,000 yen or approximately 930 US dollars. I honestly think this artwork got kind of snubbed. It's a really cool artwork. I just think it has a lot of impact in it. You can really see the emotion inside of Wishy Washy. And I just really like Wishy Washy. I think it's a really cool artwork. It almost tells a story. It shows how like Wishy Washy is like fighting against the current almost. Really cool artwork. If it was me, I think this one should have won, but it is what it is. Uh, besides winning the monetary uh, prize, Kuzunoki does not get the card printed. It's only the first place winner that gets their card printed. The third place winner was a Genesect artwork showing Genesect doing whatever it is that Genesect does. Still a really cool artwork. The artist was Takuyoa and they will also get a $930 uh, monetary prize. Do, they do not get their card printed. As well, the Pokemon company has also shown off a lot of other amazing artworks of artists and runner-ups. I will have a link down in the description so you guys can look through all the artworks for yourself. Next bit of news is that the Pokemon company is now doing a limited reprint of Ultra Prism. Ultra Prism is of course the most expensive modern Pokemon card set and it is still inside of rotation. So it makes sense for the Pokemon company to reprint it, even though it is reaching the point where it's going to be rotating out fairly soon. So it was a questionable decision, but in general, I think I support it because as a modern set, it is extremely expensive. People do need the cards to play the game. So it is what it is. The Pokemon company can definitely reprint it. And this is causing a lot of collectors to get cold feet on a lot of modern sets you're already starting to see prices drop on other booster boxes such as Unbroken Bonds, Team Up, Cosmic Eclipse, as well as Unified Minds. And this makes sense because these sets would be the next one on the reprint list if the Pokemon company continues on. Team Up and Unbroken Bonds are very expensive right now at $300 bo a booster box. And this is an extremely 
uh, risky collectible if you were to purchase one because honestly the Pokemon company could reprint these any day of the week. At $300 a booster box you're reaching that the point where you need a reprint especially considering that uh, Unbroken Bonds and Team Up still has another year inside of standard rotation. A lot of people need these cards to play the game. In general, if the Pokemon Company wants to reprint the set, they can. I think long term, they are still great collectibles. I'm not a huge fan of collecting booster boxes, and I've stated this before. Modern booster boxes are just poor display pieces. As a collector, I really enjoy products and collectibles that I can display and show off and booster boxes are so skewed towards the investment side and not skewed enough towards the collectible side that I generally only have a couple of modern booster boxes strictly for the purpose of the channel. I get to open them on the channel and I get to have a little skin in the game so that when I talk about these uh, Pokemon cards, I, I have a reason to, you know, it impacts me as well as a lot of you guys. So yeah, the Pokemon company is probably going to reprint Unbroken Bonds. They're probably going to reprint Team Up. And any set that really becomes expensive, I would expect a reprint. The one that people always ask about is, do you think Burning Shadows will get a reprint? And I am 99% sure that the Pokemon company would never reprint Burning Shadows. There's a couple of reasons for that. Burning Shadows is already outside of rotation. Uh, it has not been a part of standard play for nine months and it's only getting older and older. So it would be unreasonable of the Pokemon company to reprint Burning Shadows. If they do reprint Burning Shadows, then all bets are off. If they can reprint Burning Shadows, then they can reprint any set. So I think the Pokemon company is doing what is right for their trading card game and uh, the collector market has always been on the back of their mind but not the focus so this follows right in line with what the company's goals are. Final bit of news is that Pokemon Go Fest 2020 is happening this weekend. Normally it would not be a very big deal but this year it's a lot different because this is probably the biggest Pokemon event of the year considering that Pokemon Worlds is canceled and a bunch of other events are canceled and it's also the first year that Pokemon Go Fest is held globally. You can get into Pokemon Go and play Pokemon Go Fest right at home. It's happening this weekend. I'm definitely be out walking around catching a lot of shinies, catching a lot of uh, rare Pokemons. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It might be the biggest uh, event of this summer for me. I, I At the end of the day, I think it's gonna be a super memorable event. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be packing water, packing snacks, uh, packing an extra charger and battery, and just gonna be walking around enjoying the event and meeting a lot of other collectors and uh, Pokemon Go players. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope to see you guys out there. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.